This video will identify the components of the retinal neurovascular unit. It will review how vision loss may occur under conditions of chronic hyperglycemia. It will also explain how neurovascular dysfunction is related to nonproliferative and proliferative retinopathy and macular edema. The eye functions as a biological digital camera. The light entering the eye is focused on the retina. The light image captured by the neural retina is relayed to the occipital cortex of the brain to be processed and analyzed. The eye is the only organ of the body where the complications of diabetes can be seen as they progress. Chronic hyperglycemia causes a breakdown of retinal vascular, neural, and supporting glial and immune cells. This slide illustrates clinical findings found in non-proliferative, classified as mild, moderate, and severe, and proliferative retinopathy. The formation of new retinal vessels is called neovascularization. Neovascularization is the clinical sign that separates non-proliferative from proliferative retinopathy. Macular edema is also a clinical sign of diabetes-related retinopathy. It may occur at any time, with or without the presence of non-proliferative or proliferative retinopathy. Macular edema is characterized by retinal thickening due to fluid leakage or hard exudates in the macular region of the retina. Macular edema may cause a sudden deterioration or loss of central vision. Although non-proliferative and proliferative retinopathy occur more often than macular edema, their presence is asymptomatic and goes unnoticed because the damage occurs in the peripheral retina. How does hyperglycemia cause retinopathy? The neurovascular unit is a simplified way to understand the pathophysiology of diabetes-related retinopathy and how it causes vision loss. This retinal cross-section shows the diversity of cell types. These cells are categorized according to their functions. The neural cells are responsible for capturing and transferring the digital image to the occipital region of the brain. The glial and immune cells function as neural butlers in charge of retinal homeostasis responsible for maintenance, energy procurement, and waste disposal. The vascular network of the retinal arterioles and capillaries provide around-the-clock energy, waste removal, and transport services. This slide will identify components of the neovascular unit. The neural component is composed of the rods and cones, bipolar, horizontal, and amacrine and ganglion cells. The glial and immune cells are usually included under one category and include Mueller, astrocyte, and microglia. The vascular network of arterioles and capillaries contain the endothelial cells and are surrounded by the pereocytes. In the presence of chronic hyperglycemia, if the neurovascular unit is unable to maintain homeostasis, a cascade of events causes neovascular dysfunction, which may lead to vision loss and blindness. What is the cascade of events that causes diabetes-related retinopathy? Chronic hyperglycemia and other factors listed cause detrimental altercations to a variety of cellular biochemical pathways active in the neovascular unit. Collectively, these pathways and the inflammatory effects of chronic hyperglycemia are thought to cause an increase in aberrant growth factors, inflammatory cytokines, and or reactive oxygen species. These changes cause a breakdown of glial, neural, or vascular elements which begin the cascade of events leading to retinopathy. Hyperglycemia promotes lymphocyte accumulation in the retinal vessels that cause ischemia, promotes vascular leakage, and tissue hypoxia. New vessels are formed in an attempt to restore retina equilibrium. This cascade of neurovascular dysfunction is associated with clinical stages of retinopathy progression. The formation of new blood vessels is referred to as angiogenesis or neovascularization. This is a magnified illustration of the normal functioning neurovascular unit. This next image shows neovascular unit dysfunction. The pericyte is no longer functioning and the endothelium has developed vascular leakage and tissue hypoxia. The changes that occur at the cellular level parallel the clinical signs of retinopathy seen clinically. The clinical signs of retinopathy determine the classification and staging of diabetes-related retinopathy. This image identifies the different presentations seen in non-proliferative and proliferative retinopathy and identifies the area where macular edema occurs. Non-proliferative and proliferative retinopathy are usually asymptomatic to the person with diabetes. 
It is only when neovascular vessels break and preretinal or vitreous hemorrhage occurs that a person with diabetes may exhibit clinical symptoms. The 4-2-1 rule is an indication of severe non-proliferative retinopathy. This cross-section shows a normal retina. It also shows the location of where the clinical signs of retinopathy occur in the presence of poorly managed hyperglycemia. It is good to remember that fluid leakage and hard exudates in the area of the macula is called macular edema, and neovascularization is a hallmark of proliferative retinopathy. Thank you for watching this video.